Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Q4 and FY22 results conference call of Dixon Technologies hosted by MK Global Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of today's presentation. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now hand the conference over to Mr. Nawal Said, MK Global Financial Services. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, Peter. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome the management and thank them for this opportunity. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Atul Lal, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Saurabh Gupta, Chief Financial Officer. I shall now hand over the call to management for uh, their opening remarks. Over to you, Saurabh. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Saurabh Gupta. Uh, of course, we also have on the call uh, RMD, Mr. Lal. He's slightly unwell. Good evening. So I'll be sharing the opening remarks. Uh, so thank you very much for joining the earnings call for the quarter ended uh, March 2022. Uh, we are very pleased to report a strong performance in the fourth quarter with a 60 dips improvement in operating margins sequentially. So as we have been guiding on the earnings call, uh, so our margins, uh, operating profit margins improved from 3.4% in Q3 to 4% in Q4. And this has been on account of operating leverage and continuous improvement in the cost structures across all businesses and continued implementation of the strategic price increases across ODM business of washing machine and lighting, uh, which of course is to negate the cost pressures of the inflated raw material prices. Uh, the further prices in price increases are being implemented as we speak, uh, wherever gaps still exist. And we have instituted cost optimization and efficiency measures across all our operations to support and to restore the margins. Our cost optimization initiative and proven working capital management will help us to sustain growth, profitability, and even make the balance sheet even stronger. Uh, overall, we are very happy uh, that we could end this year on a good, strong note uh, with healthy growth across all the verticals, despite many headwinds. Headwinds relating to raw material, inflationary pressures, geopolitical concerns, and consumption setbacks caused by the COVID disruptions. Uh, now coming to the overall performance for the quarter four, our consolidated revenues for the quarter ended March 31st was uh, 2,953 odd crores as against 2,110 odd crores, so which is a growth of 40 odd percent. Our EBITDA for the quarter was 120 odd crores as against 81 crores in the same period last year, which is a growth of 49 odd percent. And a PAT for the quarter was 63 crores, as against 44 crores uh, in the corresponding period previous year, which is a growth of, again, 43 odd percent. Now, I would like to share the performance and strategy in each of the verticals going forward. So let me start with consumer electronics. So in this vertical, the revenues for the quarter was almost 1,000 odd crores, with an operating profit of 28 crores, and there was a sequential a Q on Q improvement of 60 bits in operating margins uh, to 2.8% as against 2.2% in Q3. In the current quarter, the revenues uh, within this 1,000 crores, the revenues of AC, PCB, and reverse fire six business was 76 crores and 1.6 crores respectively. Uh, now we have expanded our annual capacity to 6 million sets out of the total market in India of around 15 million. And we are fully backwardly integrated in uh, we are backwardly integrated in LCM and SMT lines, uh, and we are the largest capacity in India, catering to almost 35% of India's requirement. We now have a total area in Tirupati campus of almost 450,000 square feet, uh, which is fully backwardly integrated. We are now further investing in additional uh, in uh, in SMT lines on complete assembly line of TV and injection molding line in the campus in line with our backward integration strategy. Uh, as mentioned in the call last time, we, we got a huge order for LED TV under our own design solution from one of the largest brands globally. And uh, I am glad to share that the business has commenced in this month of May. And we expect significant volumes from that brand in the current, current financial year. Um, 
we expect that the LED volumes this year should grow by another 40%, mainly on account of this big order win. And uh, from the 3 million sets that we have closed in FI 22-23, and we should see further improvement in margins, or the margin should be almost similar to what we have reported. This is on account of the operating leverage, as well as more backward integration that we are planning. Uh, as far as monitors is concerned, we got orders from uh, two of the largest global brands for manufacturing LED monitors, and the production for one of the brands has already commenced in the month of April. Uh, the expected volumes this year should be in the range of around 0.5 million, and we expect that the order book should significantly increase in the coming years. And the margin profile in monitors should be almost similar to what you are seeing on the LED TV side. Now, the next vertical lighting. Uh, the revenues for the quarter was 305 odd crores with an operating profit of 22 crores. And there has been a quarter Q and Q improvement in margins from 6.5% in Q3 to 7.1%, uh, which has been on account of passing on the input cost increase to the customers and the various cost efficiency, uh, efficiency measures which have been taken. Uh, we are hopeful uh, to bring in operating profit levels, normalized levels, by Q2 of, of the current uh, fiscal year. So it will take us another another quarter or so, and then the margin should be slightly better than what would have been reported. Uh, we are the India's largest ODM player in lighting and have the largest capacity in various SKUs. In LED bulb, we have a capacity of 300 million, which is 50% of India's requirement. We have already expanded the capacity in baton to 5 million uh, against a total market of 9 million a month. And down lighters, we have a capacity of 1.5 million against the total Indian requirement of 3 million a month. We are closely working with now some global customers and hopeful that we should get the necessary factory and product approvals in coming months and exports should happen in this financial year. Uh, we are still investing under the, we are also uh, a beneficiary of the LED lighting components and we have made a subsidiary uh, to do that uh, business, which is Dixon Technology Solutions Private Limited in line with the backward integration strategy and we will be making our investments uh, in the first year of around 20 crores this year. And overall investment in the five year period is to the tune of 100 odd crores. The next vertical, home appliances. So this vertical saw growth of 60% year on year from 147 crores in Q4 FI21 to 234 crores in uh, Q4 FI22. Uh, out of this, uh, revenues of fully automatic machine, which we started, fully automatic washing machine, which we started only in December. Uh, between December and March, the revenues was around 33 crores. So that business is also getting ramped up and stabilized, and volumes are increasing month on month. Uh, the operating profit uh, increased by 81% uh, year on year, from 10 crores in Q4 FI21 to almost 19 crores in Q4 FI 2022. The operating margins have also increased, improved, expanded to both at the Y on Y level and Q on Q level at 7.9%. Again, this has been possible because of the passing on of the impact of commodity costs to the consumers, to our principal customers, on account of the improved operating leverage, and also on account of the cost optimization measure. Presently, we have 160 odd models in semi-automatic category, the largest with the largest portfolio in India from 6 to 14 kg category. We will have the largest. Now we are further expanding the capacity and taking the capacity in washing machine to 2.4 million. Um, and uh, our additional inf infrastructure footprint in Dehradun will be ready in next couple of months uh, to meet the increased demand ahead of the festive season. Uh, we have added more customers in this category and order book in this vertical looks very healthy. And we are expecting a 30% growth so again, uh, growth in volumes in this category. So as against 1.1 million that we have closed, we are expecting the volumes to be 1.6 million in semi-automatic category this year. In fully automatic category, we have a capacity of 0.6 million. Again, with 96 odd variants from 6.5 kg to 11 kg. And Bosch is an anchor customer there. Uh, recently, we've added customers like Lloyd and Thompson and also got into agreements with some big customers uh, whose production uh, is likely to commence by Q2 this fiscal. Uh, we are now increasingly focusing, uh, increasingly now focusing and investing on making this segment more R&D driven to serve the industry with the latest 
and innovative technologies. Uh, the next uh, division, mobile phones, is the EMS division. So in this uh, vertical, the revenues was around 1294 crores, with an operating profit of 46 crores and an operating profit margin of 3.5%. Uh, so here, of course, are in the mobile business, the anchor customer is Motorola, and that business is now completely ramped up and stabilized with monthly volumes touching almost 4 lakhs. And we have a strong order book of around 1.5 million in Q2 this, uh, this fiscal, and that will be both for domestic and the export markets. We have also started manufacturing Nokia's feature phones in addition to the smartphones that we are already manufacturing. The expected monthly volumes once stabilized will be almost half a million per month. And uh, in addition, manufacturing for, uh, we, we, we have got another customer on board called ITEL in the feature phone category with annual volumes expected to be around 1, 1 million. And that production is likely to commence by June, by, by next month, uh, June 2022. So for this, so meeting the demand for this new uh, order book or new customers, we have also taken a new 2 lakh square feet facility in Noida. Uh, uh, apart from this, uh, in addition to the 2G phones that we are doing for Samsung, we our order book uh, with Samsung on the 4G and the 5G phones are increasing. And they have already increased from 1 million a month to 1.5 million a month. And is expected to grow to around 1.7 million a month in coming months. So we are making more investments in this uh, category for Samsung 4G and 5G smartphones. Uh, and also, uh, I would be happy to share that we are the first domestic company to achieve the ceiling revenues uh, for FY21-22, which is the first year under the PLI, both on the capex and the revenue, uh, capex and the investment thresholds, and our workings, are the whole uh, uh, numbers have been audited and appraised by the project management agency, which is IFCA in this case, and they've already submitted the report to the Ministry of Electronics, and we expect to get that incentive claim to come into the system in the coming months. Uh, as far as the set box business is concerned, uh, we manufactured 6.6 lakh set boxes for Geo, which is through their company, Gen and Hathaway, uh, Dish TV, City Cables, Sun TV in Q4, and reported revenues of almost 77 crores with a 2.3% operating margin. And order book in this vertical also looks uh, stable. Uh, now, on the next vertical of security surveillance, uh, so we had Dixon as a JV with Ayate and Fotec. So Dixon's 50% share of the revenues for this quarter was around 110 odd crores, with an operating profit of 3.8 crores and a 3.4% operating profit margin. The order book in this segment also looks very healthy, and we are going for further capacity expansion from 10 million per annum to 14 million per annum by Q2 this fiscal. For this, we are relocating from our existing setup in Tirupati to Kuparthi Electronic Manufacturing Cluster, where we have taken 2 lakhs. Uh, square feet constructed facility. So this is all about the, uh, the existing verticals, and I'd also like to up take uh, update you about the opportunities that the company is pursuing and some of the new verticals that we have recently started. So I'll start with refrigerators. So refrigerators, uh, now uh, we will be creating a capacity of almost 1.2 million direct coal ca category, which will be ultimately expanded to frost-free category as well. The Indian market for direct coal side is around 10 million. So we broadly will be around 10 to 12 percent of the Indian market, and uh, the balance 4 million is the cross free and the other categories. Uh, our product portfolio will be from 190 to 235 liters with multiple features and different star rating. The product designs have already been made. The technology partner has been finalized. Uh, we already have the land bank with us, 20 acres land bank in Greater Noida. The construction is expected to commence soon, and uh, the orders for the machinery will be placed in the coming weeks. We have started engaging with potential customers, and we expect that the mass production is likely to commence somewhere around Q2 of FI 23-24. Now, on the IT hardware products, uh, we started manufacturing for Acer in December 2021, and the volumes, uh, though they started small, but they're expected to increase. And we are also uh, in advanced discussions to close an agreement for manufacturing of tablets with one of the largest brands, and we expect that the production for then should commence by Q2 of this fiscal. As, as you know, we are again a beneficiary uh, for the PLI under the PLI for IT hardware products. And in Q4, we have achieved both our revenue 
uh, the threshold revenues and we have already also done our investments in Q4. So we've also qualified for an incentive claim in Q4 uh, in FI 21-22. On the telecom and networking products, uh, we, started we started manufacturing ONTs uh, for ATEL and uh, the production has already started. And this is again, uh, we have a very strong order book from ATEL in this category. Uh, as you know, this is a 5149 JV which has been made with Beetle and we are a beneficiary under the PLI scheme of uh, for telecom and networking products. Uh, another venture which is the inverter controller boards for air conditioners. So a JV has been formed with Rexum to manufacture inverter controller boards for air conditioners. As you know, Rexum is a design and technology partner for Daikin and they bring a lot of strength in PCBA designing. And clearly, Rexum wants to make India as a manufacturing hub for its customers from both the domestic and global markets. And this JV company, which is a 6040 JV, is a beneficiary of the PLI. Total investment that is required to be made over a period of five years is around 51 crores. So Dixon's uh, share of investment will be around 20 odd crores. Uh, we have finalized the manufacturing location in Noida and, uh, and the production uh, in, under the JV is expected to commence in Q2. Again, the revenue potential is quite immense uh, in this vertical as well, and we should have some healthy EBITDA margins and strong return ratios. On variables and variables, uh, as you know, on the variable side, the Indian market is the third largest market globally and one of the fastest growing markets. A 50-50 JV has been formed with Imagine Marketing for its flagship brand boat for manufacturing variables and variables. Currently, we are manufacturing the largest selling SKU, which is TWS with an estimated, and we have an estimated yearly volume order of around 7 million units. And we will soon start the production of neck bands, which is another high selling SKU for both, with an estimated uh, yearly order of around 4.4 million units at an order manufacturing facility. As the partnership strengthens, we expect that more categories will come into the JV, like Bluetooth speakers and smartwatches. Smartwatches is another category which we see as a, is a very high growth market. Uh, so all of these products will also, uh, uh, over a period of time, will come under the JV. So I would like to now just stop here and uh, uh, would like to answer any questions along with Mr. Lal. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Bumika Nair with Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Um, so just want to understand the mobile business a little better, given that we're looking at a very sharp ramp up. If you can just talk about what are the kind of ramp up that we're looking on Motorola specifically, how is we in the exit in um, March and how is it scaling up right now? And if you can also talk about uh, Samsung, given that uh, they're looking to, uh, you know, scale down their uh, feature phone business as well. Uh, so, so Bhumika, um, so as I mentioned in the opening remarks, so clearly our volumes with Motorola are ramping up and they've already touched uh, closer to a level of 4 lakhs. And we have an order book with Motorola for almost 1.5 million in next quarter. And we expect that the volume should or the monthly volume should go to around 5 lakhs for us. So clearly the ramp up has hap is happening at a faster pace now. And uh, we are expecting that as against uh, a 3,000 crore revenue that we have done in the mobile and EMS division, uh, out of which a significant portion has come from mobile business. Our mobile business in itself this fiscal year uh, should translate into almost a, a, a 7 to 7,500 crore revenue which will be significantly led by Motorola as an anchor customer. And within Motorola, a significant portion, 60% of the proceeds from Motorola will be exported to North America markets. So clearly, uh, 
that's the outlook on the mobile side as far as Motorola is concerned. And also, as I mentioned, that we've also added customers like Nokia on the 2G phone side, where they have a decent market share. And also, ITEL, again, they have, they have a decent market share as far as the 2G phone or the feature phone market is concerned. Now, to your second question on the Samsung side, yes, uh, clearly, yes, Samsung will is planning to exit out of the feature phone business. And they should exit either by December or by March this, this financial year. Uh, clearly, our volumes were all already coming down for feature phone business in, as far as Samsung is concerned, but they were increasingly shifting more and more uh, smartphone business to us, 4G and 5G phones to us. So as far as our overall revenue and profitability is concerned, uh, clearly we see that the, since the realization on a, on a smartphone is much, much higher than what we are making on a feature phone, uh, and they are sh increasingly shifting volumes. They started with 5 lakhs, and now clearly we are looking at a number of almost 1.5 million and then gradually even increasing beyond that. So uh, we should be fine as far as the overall profitability uh, and, and, and revenue potential is concerned in case of Samsung business. So they, are, yeah, they, are, they, they will be reducing the feature phone volumes, but at the same time they are increasing the smartphone volumes with us. Also, Bhumika, coming in here, uh, you see customer acquisition is always a very focused exercise. Index indeed. So on the smartphone side, we are in advanced stage of discussion. We are the, one of the largest global brands operating in India. We have successfully qualified the technical audits. We are awaiting the commercial negotiation to be launched very shortly. So please be rest assured, mobile as a vertical is going to be the largest trigger of growth for Dixon in the forthcoming fiscal and in the coming years. Got it, sir. So the other question is on the uh, washing machine side. Uh, you know, you spoke about the scale up in addition of customers, etc. Out there, um, what kind of volumes can we look at in FY23? And the second aspect is on the margins. While yes, there is an improvement over you know 4Q21 and also over the previous quarter, uh, the margin profile still remains lower than the double digits that we have been seeing in the past. So, um, you know, when do we see these margins coming back to the double-digit profile or, you know, closer to that 9 to 10 percent kind of range? So, Bhumika, uh, so last Bhumika, year sir. we closed in uh, washing machine at 1.1 million in volume. We are budgeting 1.6 million in the current fiscal. In addition to that, we are budgeting 289k from fully automatic top loading. So uh, the combined figure is almost going to be 1.9 million, which is a significant increase from 1.1 million of next year, of last year. Now, uh, margins, the teams have worked on the cost optimization. And also there has been, uh, uh, we have been able to pass on partially to our, to our customers the cost increases. But these are challenging environments. And uh, the exercise is on. I don't think in the current fiscal we'll be back to double digit, but definitely there'll be some improvement from the existing operating margin levels. But uh, back to double digit, I don't think so. What we'll get is uh, absolute number increases and some improvement in the operating margins. Right, but we, uh, you know, just from the top line, we're looking at 1.6 versus a 1.1. Uh, like the TVs, is the demand still holding on, or um, you know, is this purely driven by new client additions, etc.? So it's a combination of both. It's getting the larger share of existing customers' wallet, and also new customer acquisition. The combination of both. The order book looks pretty healthy. Got it, sir. I'll come back in the question queue. Thank you very much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Bhartia with Investec. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good evening, sir. Um, hi, Aditya. My hi, sir. Uh, so my first question is uh, on the lighting business, uh, wherein growth has been a bit disappointing in the last couple of quarters. Just want to understand uh, what is that on account of and how we're seeing traction building up in batons and downlighters. So Aditya, in last two quarters, uh, one saw significant headwinds in this business. We had gone through significant uh, cost optimization exercises, 
and there was a minor improvement. However, I feel a lot of work needs to be done. We have a good order book, but uh, the inflationary trend we were not able to pass on to the customers. Uh, some what uh, we have been able to achieve that in the last quarter and also in the current quarter. A uh, lot of uh, consolidation exercises, form improvement, uh, uh, taking advantage of the operating leverage of the scale, all that has happened. You will see some improvement in the current quarter, but I think it's going to take a couple of quarters to come back to the original levels of 8.5%. Uh, so my question was not so much on margins, but on uh, uh, absolute revenue numbers. Uh, wherein lighting business growth has been a bit lackluster. Uh, so just trying to understand: is the market itself has the market itself slowed down significantly, especially as far as bulbs are concerned? Um, and and with all the expansion that we had done on the down lighters and baton side, how's the uh, uh, traction over there? So market indeed has slowed down. I don't see a very significant point growth in this particular vertical. Uh, but yeah, our quantities both on down lighters and batons, the kind of order book one is seeing, will keep on improving month on month. So you will see some improvement. LED bulb would be kind of constant, but there will be improvement uh, in, in batons and down lighters in the forthcoming months. Understood, sir. Uh, so on the TV business, uh, um, you have spoken about a large customer moving to uh, mo moving on, giving you larger quantities uh, on ODM business. Um, what exactly does the ODM part of the business entail in case of TVs? Uh, given that still a lot of components, I guess, uh, would need to be imported, and what could that really mean for margins? That's point number one. And and uh, just on the same segment, uh, are you seeing any issues uh, from your largest customer in the segment? after some of the actions that were taken by the government against against them? So responding to the first part of the question, uh, Aditya, when we talk about uh, ODM or what we call as ODM and also JDM with uh, the largest global brand, uh, you see more and more global brands are looking at outsourced solutions. Now, we are working on four SKUs. We are working on 55 inches ultra high definition and 43 inches ultra high definition. Wherein the PCBA, because Samsung operates on Tyson operating system, the technology is from Samsung. However, the mechanicals, uh, the displays, the audios, uh, it's all designed by Dixon aligning with the Tyson software, operating software of Samsung. So this product has already been launched and the commercial production has started just last week. Then there are two other solutions, which is again in 32 inches and 43 inches HD, uh, in which the PCB is also Dixon's offering. So that's a kind of complete offering from Dixon's table. Now that is it. So these four SKUs are Dixon, ODM, and JDM solutions for Samsung. Now, it's a big up for us. Please appreciate that we grew from 2.7 million to almost 3 million in the last fiscal, and we are targeting almost 4.2 million in the current fiscal. This is when the market is not exactly growing. So this is a big plus for us. Now, as far as margin is concerned, uh, I expect the margins to expand a bit. Uh, but these, uh, if you see Dixon's trajectory, whenever you launch a new project, it takes some time to stabilize, Fine. just like you would have seen lately in mobiles. But uh, I feel that a quarter or so, uh, one needs to ramp up and stabilize, and they will, after that you'll see some improvement in the margins on the ODM, JDM side. Uh, by the time the supply chain uh, and sourcing stabilizes, uh, when you're looking at our other large anchor customer, yeah, it was a it was a setback, and I personally engaged with the leadership in Beijing and in Bangalore, and they have assured me that there is no dilution, and I also see no change in their forecast plan. It continues to be at 1.8, 1.9 million in the current fiscal, and also there has been no impact at all on our current assets, 
our payments are flowing absolutely smoothly that's good to hear sir thanks a lot thank you thank you our next question is from the line of venu bait with iifl please go ahead yeah hi uh, good evening sir uh, so my first question is um, with respect to the incentive payout from mobiles uh, how is the process in terms of uh, the cash reimbursements coming in from the uh, from the government uh, so are these largely in terms of duty payouts or cash reimbursements and uh, by when do we actually see the payout uh, or the incentive payout uh, materializing for us so would you like to take that or so renu as i mentioned uh, so we have already filed an incentive claim uh, we are the first company to have actually achieve the revenue and capex thresholds investment thresholds so the way the way it works is there is a project management agency which is ifc in this case they will mm -hmm. audit uh, come and see your factories they will audit those numbers appraise the uh, appraise the entire workings and and then they present the report to ministry of electronics So in that case, uh, uh, as far as uh, our case is concerned, so that part has already been done, and the report has already been submitted to Ministry of Electronics. Uh, now the next step uh, in this case is that there is an empowered committee, which constitutes the ministry the secretaries of Ministry of uh, Electronics, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Commerce, and it is headed by Mitab Kant. Uh, and then they will, of course, evaluate your case, and based on that, they will uh, finalize and the cash. It will be. reimbursed in the form of an rtgs kind of a transfer which will come to your account so that's how it would typically these are the steps that will be followed so basically the cash payout <coughs> sorry to us will come by the uh, by second half of the current fiscal for the previous year no my sense is uh, you know as far as august to december is concerned so that yes. part has been already been appraised so that should depending on when this then this meeting of the empowered committee happens so that should come in the next 30 to 60 days Uh, as far as january to march is concerned uh, that may take another 3 uh, to 4 months and then accordingly every there will be a lag of every quarter or so sure uh, the second is if we look at the washer portfolio can you update how has been uh, now the order book and ramp up with bosch on the fully automatic washer and um, how are uh, the margins and profitability on this portfolio stacking up so uh, Uh, Good. You know, on uh, the fully automatic top loading, mm -hmm. we have finalized two platforms of uh, washers. The first platform is up to eight kgs, and the second platform is up to ten kgs. Mm -hmm. So what has been rolled out is platform one, what we call as the P one. And uh, okay. at present, uh, we are uh, at a volume of around twelve to fifteen k. This month, we would have done around twelve k. That's mm -hmm. all the book like. And the P2 platform that is up to 10 kg is under reliability testing. Uh, the toolings oh. and all are all with us. The reliability testing with Bosch is a long drawn affair, and I think it is going to be rolled out in the quarter of October to December. We have also launched now another P0, which is an economy model, and that mm -hmm. tooling I'm expecting it to arrive by 15th of June. that's not for bosch but that's for various other brands which are looking for an economy solution that's going right. to be easier and faster to to roll out uh, i think uh, it's going to be rolled out in the quarter in the month of july august so that is uh, uh, the plan the operating margins initially uh, because there's a ramp up cost but finally it's going to be in the similar range as semi automatic slightly better than that got it and um while you mentioned that on the ref portfolio we would also be extending our offerings uh, beyond uh, direct cool to proxy as well uh, so does that change our capex outlay and investment required in terms of capabilities for the uh, products and uh, by when are we expecting both uh, as in uh, um, the uh, production eventually and commercialization of the facility uh, for direct cool and will frost will be simultaneously or it would happen with a lag of couple of years once dc is fully stabilized or it ramps up so renu the first focus is on uh, dc only 
what we have done and what we had shared earlier with the stakeholders was that we are planning a capacity of 0.6 million. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking at the prospects, we have increased the capacity to 1.1 million. So this is that's what the project has been rolled out. Now, except for the toolings and some modifications, are the lines ready for forestry? Yes, they would be ready for forestry. As of now, have we calibrated and defined our plan for forestry? No. So the first focus is going to be on launch of uh, DC. The targeted date for trials is March 23. I think, as Saurabh said, by Q1 or slightly uh, getting into Q2, we should be rolling out this, this uh, product. Forestry, yeah, one has to wait. I, one has not even defined the plan. Sure. And my last question pertains to the LED bulbs portfolio. Uh, while we have seen some of uh, the leading players on the bulb side have been losing share, um, how should we read it? You mentioned that bulb portfolio might be flattish, uh, but are you seeing any uh, red flags in terms of Philips uh, losing a bit of share on the bulb side of the business? And how is the export um, to the European or the US market, um, how is that part of the portfolio scaling up? So I don't want to uh, give details about the specific brands, but uh, yeah, one can see that there has been a flattening of demand for the last two quarters as far as the LED bulb is concerned. So when we interact and one has personally interacted with the leadership uh, of our principals, they feel that the demand is going to come back by August or something like that. That's, and also I'm seeing lately uh, that the inventories in trade have been corrected. Uh, so that's what, uh, so I feel it's going to improve uh, from the next quarter. And that's what my sense is. Uh, as far as exports is concerned, yeah, we have got the UL approvals for US and we've got <laughs> the technical approvals for, for Europe. In fact, uh, just a couple of hours back, I was, when I was checking through my mail, yeah, we've got almost got a first order from UK. So that's it. I think it's going to take time, but we'll have those breakthroughs. Got it. Uh, thanks much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sonali Salgaonkar with Jeffries. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is with so many, uh, you know, new verticals and new customer ads ramping up, uh, what kind of a guidance in terms of revenue and margin trajectory would you like to give at this point for the coming one to two years? Uh, so would you like to take it or I take it, please? Uh, so, so, no, I'll, I'll tell you, sir. So, Sonali, uh, clearly, uh, as mentioned in the remarks, clearly our high-growth vertical will be mobile this year. Getting into new, we've got into new verticals like telecom, variables, and of course the existing verticals have expansion plans as well. So my sense is clearly we are looking at a 55 to 60 percent grant of a growth uh, from the revenues that we have delivered in FI 21-22, uh, and this will be significantly led by our mobile business. And on the margins? Margins, we think that uh, what margins we have. Uh, reported in Q4. Uh, broadly, it should be similar, uh, but yeah, you can expect a margin profile of somewhere between 4 to 4.25 operating profit margins. For F23, right? F23, right. Right, great. And just an extension to this question, uh, for the mobiles, which is the highest growth vertical for you, what kind of growth are you looking at uh, this year, I'm asking especially because your volumes and the order books are ramping up. Yeah, so as uh, if you look at our uh, mobile revenues, we have done a revenue of almost 3,000, uh, 3,138 crores. Uh, and if I exclude the revenues of other divisions, which are smaller set of box, IT hardware, telecom, and medical. Uh, it translates into almost, uh, if I remove that 350, 360, so we are closed at somewhere around 2700 odd crores. Uh, so this 2700 crores has this has the potential to go to almost uh, uh, seven, seven and a half thousand crores this year. And 
then the balance should come. Yeah, so this, that is the potential for this year. Got it. And uh, on the capex numbers, do you uh, foresee any change in your earlier guidance? You know, so capex, uh, uh, we we expect that the capex of around 340 odd crores is what we will do in FY22-23, uh, which will be a combination of PLI related capex expansion, uh, the construction advances uh, for the refrigerator project. Got it. And my last question is regarding price hikes. You did mention in your opening remarks that as we speak, you are implementing further price hikes, especially in the ODM segment. So if we can uh, understand from April, what is the kind of price hikes that we have taken on an average in ODM? So Sonali, uh, we have mainly two ODM verticals. In the case of washing machines, uh, the customers <coughs> who were kind of, it was a work in progress. We have been able to get a hike of almost 1.75 to 2 percent. In the lighting side, it's still in works. We have been able to get a hike of 1 to 1.5 percent, but we need to do more on which we are working. And we feel that in the current month and the forthcoming quarter, we should be able to do it. Got it, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Umkar Gugardari with Shri Consultancy. Please go ahead. Yeah, my question was mainly regarding the balance sheet. If you can see, there is a significant increase in the long-term borrowings. So, and the net debt has also increased. So, at what, what is the comfortable level for the management? in terms of debt to equity or debt to EBITDA? No, you're, you're absolutely right. Our debt levels have increased because we have done a capex of almost 400 crores this year. And uh, that has led to the increase in debt. But if you, even if you look at the balance sheet, our balance sheet still continues to be stronger. And there's enough cushion. If you look at a net debt to equity level, it's still 0 0.1. Um, so at an overall level, I think so these are good comfortable levels to be maintained. And we expect that as the profitability improves, as the cash flow improves, uh, this debt level should see, uh, see a reduction this year. So the uh, debt to equity would remain at the same level you are staying, or it would gradually increase in the coming years? My sense is it will not go up. It should broadly be in the similar range, plus minus something, yeah. But broadly it should be in the similar range. Okay. Uh, and. As far as the uh, EBITDA margin is concerned, you said that you would be doing around 4 to 4.25%, 4 right? For the upcoming fiscal. Oh, yeah, that's that's the broad guidance, yeah. Okay, uh, and if you look at the next, actually, say, Dixon's next three, four years, if you look at it, so where would the majority of the contribution can come from? It would be, mostly it would be from mobile phones, but apart from that, where do you see larger opportunity in terms of revenue and again translating into the margin? Yeah, so it will be all across, but yeah, in terms of revenues, it will be significantly led by mobile business, and then it will be TV business, and then uh, if you are in lighting, if you are able to get big export opportunities, then the lighting revenue should see a major growth. Uh, if you look at a washing machine portfolio this year, we have closed at 700 crores. Now that semi-automatic portfolio is going up, increasing from 1.1 to 1.6 million, and then we are additionally adding, doing almost 0.3 million of fully automatic. So my washing machine revenue should also increase from 700 odd crores to almost 1200 crores this year, and that should be again uh, 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 should be a decent growth portfolio, uh, decent growth if the export happens in those categories as well. So it will be all across, yeah, and uh, but majorly it will be led by uh, mobile as well as TV in terms of revenue contribution. Also, we are looking at three new verticals which have just been launched. So we've already started production of TWS 
DWS, presently we are only at a level of 100k per month. Within the next three months, we are targeting 1 million a month. Within the next five to six months, we are targeting 2 million a month. Similarly, the outcome, uh, the, the outlook for ONTs and set of box from Airtel is very, very huge. And that production has just started. And then the launch, the commercial launch of the DC refrigerators, uh, that is again, once we reach the peak, is going to be almost 1,000 to 1,200 crores. So all these new initiatives will also be large contributors to a growth trajectory. Okay, so given what you have said, that uh, next three to five years, can you say that uh, the management would be thinking at, at least roughly around 25-30% kind of growth? Yeah, we are very really confident about it. Yeah, there can be various events globally, geopolitically, challenges, inflationary pressures, but the internal plans are directed towards that. Okay, and you would be comfortable holding on to these margins or better the margins as the time goes? We please appreciate the maximum growth is coming from the prescriptive business. And this prescriptive business, the operating margins are in the range of around 25 to 3, 3.5%. So it's a low margin business. The new vertical of refrigerators and uh, the expanded volumes of washing machine is the ODM business, wherein the margins are going to be higher. So it's going to be a combination of both. So margins would be in this range only, which uh, sort of just shared. Okay, but as the operating efficiency kicks in, you won't be uh, seeing any margin increase. So there will be some improvement, yeah. which you would have seen in the current quarter itself, in the last quarter in mobile. Mm -hmm. The margins in the mobile business have expanded because of the operating yeah. leverage. You mm -hmm. would have seen the improvement partially because of the unit price coming down, but partially also because of the operating leverage in TV. So it will make a difference, but would okay. it completely change the scenario and uh, increase the and have a quantum jump in the margin in prescriptive business? That's not the nature of that business. So overall, it would be in the same range, which which was yeah, there in the current point quarter. Two, something like that. Yeah, it, so broadly, it will be in the same range with an upward bias because of the factors that you had mentioned. Clearly, because of the operating leverage, more backward integration, own designing, and so the new verticals also, in terms of margin profile, would be better. But again, a significant portion is coming from the prescriptive business. So my sense is yes, margin should improve. Uh, but yeah. Uh, not 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 a significant uh, improvement, but yeah, it will. There should be an improvement here and here. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like to ask a question, then please press star one on your telephone keypad. Our next question is from the line of Pulkit Patni with Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thank you uh, for that, those details. Uh, just one question. Is it fair to assume, and I don't know if you already spoke about it, that the various segments in PLI where you have achieved the threshold of, uh, of investment as well as the incremental sales, uh, those PLI benefits are already included in our margins? And if yes, if you could quantify what those numbers are. Yeah, so as, as, we, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we are a beneficiary of five PLIs, so out of which uh, two PLIs we have achieved our thresholds. Uh, so one on the mobile side, uh, we achieved our maximum revenue thresholds and the investment thresholds. Uh, on the laptop side, we achieved our uh, uh, the, the receiving revenues on the mobile side as well as the investment thresholds. On the laptop side, yes, we are again achieved those uh, investment thresholds and the threshold revenue, the minimum revenues that you have to uh, do to qualify for that incentive claim. Uh, now, in this numbers, uh, yes, because of this appraisal which I mentioned has already been done by the agency. Uh, so there, there is a, some income which has already been booked uh, in, and which is reflected in the margin. And that number is to the tune of almost uh, around 8 to 9 crores. Uh, 8 to 9 crore for the entire year? For the entire year, yeah. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhruv Jain with Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. 
Hello, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Sir, I had two questions. Uh, one was on the mobile phone business. So, you know, uh, we've seen a significant jump uh, in the mobile phone revenue, but you also had it a lot of, you also have a lot of customers. So, uh, you know, we understand that Motorola is the prime customer, but, you know, if you could just give a sense of how much contribution, uh, you know, just a broad sense of how much contribution would Motorola uh, be giving in the, in the mobile phone business. So, in uh, so business, if in this year, as I mentioned, if we'll be if you're looking at doing a revenue of almost seven seven and a half thousand crores, uh, and this is of course not taking into account the new customer whose audit has been done, and which can be an which for which there can be an additional upside. Uh, so out of this seven seven and a half thousand crores, uh, uh, the other customers apart from Motorola should contribute thousand odd crores, and the and the balance portion would come from uh, Mot uh, Motorola. All right. And sir, the other question was with respect to the, you know, the uh, consumer electronics uh, TV business. We've seen a sequential uh, decline, uh, you know. Uh, so, you know, what has caused this? Uh, you know, is there some sort of a demand issue that we are seeing? Uh, no, actually what has happened is that, uh, if you remember that in the last earning call, we mentioned that in TV, uh, one should also look at the average selling prices. So what happened in, in the last post-COVID scenario, the prices of the open cell, which is the largest component, which goes into a TV, they, those component prices have increased. And since it is a prescriptive business, so those increases just gets passed on because, and, and as a result, the revenues look higher and the margins optically look lower. Uh, so if you look at this, uh, analysis of Q4 versus Q1, uh, Q4 versus uh, Q4. So there is a drop of uh, 20%, right, in in terms of uh, revenues. So this has been majorly led by the drop in the uh, the average selling prices across all our portfolio. The drop is as high as um, of this of the 20%. The drop is as high as uh, 15 or percent. So there is a, there has been a, a volume drop year on year, but very nominal. It's majorly because of the selling prices coming down. And as a result, the margins are looking better. The operating profit margins are looking better. Thanks, sir. You are very helpful. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, then please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Our next question is from the line of Omkar Gugadare with Sri Consultancy. Please go ahead. Harry. Yeah, uh, with the kind of debt levels you are sitting on, uh, would you be looking to raise any equity? No, we are not. No, we feel not confident not. that it can be easily done, safely done from the internal accruals of the company. So whatever CapEx plans we have, it can be done from the internal accruals. So we have no plans uh, to raise any equity. Okay, and as far as the AC business is concerned, can you elaborate a bit more on that? As we are not the front runners in the AC business, so are you looking to expand that business more or are you comfortable with the current limits? No, we, we have absolutely no plans to get into the AC business. Uh, so there's, there's so much on the plate right now. The idea is to focus and, and consolidate our existing verticals and, and the new verticals. Okay, okay, thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nawal Tse with MK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. To 4.25% for 23. So uh, as our uh, PLI business or prescriptive business will, will increase substantially, uh, in FI23 and your uh, commentary on ODM business margin expansion will be gradual. So uh, how uh, we will be able to achieve this plus 4% margin because we ended with 3.5 in 22. Uh, so any any thought, I mean reconciliation seems a bit difficult to me. So you can explain on that. So now 3.5% is also a function of a bad Q1 which was impacted by a third wave where we had margins of only 2.5%. 
So that is also a function. But if you look at the last couple of quarters, in quarter three, we had a course for margin of 3.4, and in which we guided that there will be more passing on of passing of uh, those input cost increases to the principal customers. So significant, uh, some portion of that has already been done, which is reflected in the margin. And we expect that those uh, continued passing on of those input cost increases will happen. We are also working on a lot of uh, uh, bomb reductions, cost optimization measures internally. Overall, at a company level, by expanding into all of the verticals, uh, so in some verticals, the operating leverage benefit has, has kicked in. In some verticals, it will, it will kick in over a period of time. As we get into more backward integration, as we get into more designing, ultimately, all this will lead to expansion of margins. So we are clearly guiding that what you what what margins you are seeing on washing machine lighting should see an improvement further in the coming quarters. So that should add to my margin profile. And the second thing which I mentioned that the prices of open cell have come down. So as against an average selling price of 14, 15 thousand that we saw in the entire year last year, those the selling prices will now look like 11, 11 to 11 and a half thousand rupees. And TV business as such contributes. So out of the 17,000 crore revenues that we are projecting for this year, uh, TV revenues will be almost 5,500 crores, so almost a significant portion. And if that business, uh, the margins grow up by 30-40 uh, bits, like the way it has happened in this quarter, so it will also have a positive impact on the overall company margins. So combination of all these factors, we feel uh, that, uh, and, and some of the new verticals that we are getting, uh, which we have got into telecom, both, uh, Rexam, JV, these are also better in terms of margin profiles. So clearly, a uh, combination of all these factors gives us this com confidence that the margin should be uh, similar or better than what, what we have delivered in Q4. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is uh, from the line of Omkar Gukadari with Sri Consultancy. Please go ahead. Yeah, with 22% ROE and 20, almost 25% ROC, what kind of scope do you see for this expansion in all those ratios? Yeah, so historically, if you look at, we have been maintaining a 30% plus kind of an ROC and a 24% plus kind of an ROE. We continue to, uh, uh, we, 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 of course, we will work towards it, uh, to going back to those levels. Now, what has happened in this, in the year that we have just concluded, FI 21-22, we have done a capex of 200 crores, and in this current year, we are looking at a capex of 340 crores. So a lot of the capex has been front-ended as far as last year is concerned or this year is concerned. So, and the new verticals are, of course, the, the fully automatic, the telecom, the boat, uh, they will start to uh, deliver optimal revenues and profitability in the coming quarters. So my sense is it will take uh, at least three, four quarters to go back to those levels, maybe slightly earlier, uh, if it happens, but yeah, but the idea is to go back internally to, to similar levels as 30% ROC and 24-25% ROE. Oh, sorry, I missed it. Uh, how much time it would take, you said? Anywhere between 9 to 12 months or maybe slightly higher, so 9 to 15 months probably. Okay, uh, and as far as the cash conversion cycle or the days are concerned, uh, what would be the comfortable level? Is this the comfortable level around nil days? Yeah, it's, it's a comfortable position, but continuously there is a focus on managing your cash conversion cycle on your working capital management. So that's a continuous focus. So wherever we think the working capital intensity had gone up because of the supply chain issues uh, and uh, because of this uh, yeah, supply chain issues, we are working towards it to bring it down, and that's happening. So month on month, those inventory levels will keep getting corrected. So hopefully we should be in a better position in six months down this line on this working capital cycle. So this would even get better than zero days. But yeah, uh, broadly this is this is a comfortable ratio as as far as the overall company is concerned. Can all the problems re uh, regarding shipments and chip shortage are all this behind us? What would you say on that? Yeah, so as far as yeah, now there were problems in April where the shipments because of the closure of Chinese ports, uh, the shipments got delayed and we had some impact in the production, which we are hoping that, that that production will comp get compensated within the quarter. Uh, yeah, by sense is absolutely there is no issue right now. In fact, the freight rates, the logistics costs have also come down from the peak level significantly. And uh, clearly we are passing on more and more of the price increases to our customers. So as of now, the situation is fine, but I'll, I'll also request Mr. Lal if, if he wants to add something on it. So 
as of now the situation is is is, is in control okay and what about the chip shortages uh so we are not facing any chip issue right now this uh, there is absolutely no issue on the chip side okay thanks a lot thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments yeah so thank you everybody for taking out uh, time for the call uh, in case you have any follow up questions any queries please feel free and I'm, I'm 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 happy to answer those questions thank, thank you. you very much on behalf of mk global financial services that concludes the conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines